Thank you very much, Peter. Um, just a word, of, just a word about the arrangement that uh, Valentina and I have come to. Valentina is very kindly. She originally offered to um, uh, simultaneously translate every word, and we reasoned this would cut in half the amount of things we could think about. So Valentina has very kindly agreed that I will speak in English. If I say anything that you don't understand, and that you want to understand, so both <laughs> things, okay? No, 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 otherwise you just let it wash over you. If I say something and you don't understand it, just call out and Valentina will help. That's if French will help. I appreciate we have an international audience here. I'm very grateful to you all for coming. I'm aware that in this room we have people from different parts of the world, and also that we have several academics to the academics, I would say, this is not an academic paper, quite deliberately so. Um, the purpose of the paper is to, paper, what a word. The purpose of this is to look at some of the evidence in the Queer Tango book. I'll explain a little about that in a moment. And to reflect on masculinity. So, I've called this the Queer Tango Book and Masculinities, Critiques and Celebrations in Context. These are two important people and some hanger on. The most important person is Birte Havermöller from Aarhus in Denmark. Birte had the idea for the book after a conversation uh, with a colleague and she is the main driver behind it. She sent out a call for material and uh, Olaya Oramo from Madrid responded with material and offered to help her edit it because the book was to be in English but Birte has English as a second language and no Spanish. Olaya has Spanish and English as a second language and yes, who has English as a first language, but no Spanish, no Danish, no Russian, not much. Um, so I offered a piece and also offered to help edit it. And between us we produced the Queer Tango book. Um, I'm delighted to say that you can have it for free. It's an e-book, you just Google the Queer Tango book and you can download it and you can read it. The Queer Tango book, I should be honest now, I was going to say the Queer Tango book is the first thing that the Queer Tango project has done. The truth is, we were doing the book and thought we'd like to do other things. So we developed the idea of the Queer Tango project with the book as the first outcome. The Queer Tango conversation which is a group I commend to you on Facebook, where issues connected with Queer Tango are discussed. And then, following a visit I made to Montevideo in Uruguay, where I met Gonzalo Colazzo, we found that between us, we had any number of interesting images that might or might not be connected with Queer Tango and the history of Queer Tango, or a history of Queer Tango. So we are going to pool our resources and send out a call for further images and start an online archive which we are very grandly calling the Queer Tango Image Archive. That's work in progress. You should hear about it in the next few months. And we might do other things. I don't know. If you have any suggestions, make them to The book. Um, in the introduction to the book, Vieta says, the Queer Tango book has been conceived of and created as a community project, emerging from a global community with materials collected via an open call. Like the Queer Tango community itself, our inclusive, our inclusive approach our approach has been inclusive and not academic, I'm doing that one again. Um, what we wanted to do with the book is to illuminate 
the richness, complexity, and particularly in the things I'm going to say this evening, the contradictions of queer tango. In order to stimulate debate, which we hope would inform how queer tango develops in the future, and above all, how it is danced. So, that's the dance. All right, I know you can't see much, but that's the dance. There aren't any words, and there aren't any other pictures, although this is a representation. So what we're doing, you can have words about dancing. It's not the same as dancing. You can have the Queer Tango book. You can have this lecture. But it should be feeding into the dancing. It's the dancing we want to support. You can have representations of Queer Tango, photographs, artworks. But the way that we are approaching it is that it is supporting the dance. It is not an activity for its own sake. Again, where people with the move. So, this evening, with some suggestions from my colleagues, it's all me. Each of my co-editors, if they were standing here now, would be giving you a different take on the things that I'm going to talk about. So, what I'm going to ask this evening is, on the evidence of the Queer Tango book, to what extent is Queer Tango shaped by attitudes towards masculinity. And importantly, one can look at that, but who cares? To whom does this matter? It's reasonable to ask, how representative is the Queer Tango book of what Queer Tango is? We would argue it's quite representative. So, if Queer Tango is international, we have 29 contributions from 10 countries, uh, not surprisingly, America is right up there at the top, Argentina up at the top, and then uh, a smattering from around the world. That reflects the nature of queer tango. And if there are more women activists in queer tango than men, and he's just stealing out of the room, but <laughs> if you were to do a head count, you'd find, Bye -bye. you'd find that there are more women involved than men, and we have 21 women contributors, 7 men, in terms of what people say they are, and, and one gender queer. So, that's okay, but this book is not representative, because we're a self-selected sample. It's just the people who offered work. Um, it's in English. We have translations from Spanish, but this has to disadvantage all the Spanish dimension of queer tango to some extent. And it has a higher proportion of the activists, the people who talk about it. It can't then accurately represent the wider body of queer tango. And similarly, that gender balance doesn't represent the wider body of queer tango in terms of men, women, and others. I've said that this is in context. I mean the word context in several different ways. I'm not going to do a formal theoretical context, but I'm just going to make a gesture towards that. So, are we going to be using queer theory? Uh, no, not really. A little bit. Just a little bit. And I thought if we're going to use queer theory, we ought really to invite Judith Butler along. Um, those of you familiar with queer theory will be familiar with Judy Butler. Those of you who aren't won't know about her, and I'll tell you a little about her. There's Judith. Judith has an idea that has been around for about 30 years now, and is agreed or not agreed with. And in its simplest terms, the suggestion is that we might be born with a sex, male, female, or something else sometimes, but that our gender is something that is constructed, something that happens. Now, when people speak about Judith Butler, they often say that she says that gender is performed, but actually she says something else. 
and I'm just going to give her a little space to explain what she means. I'm asking here, is gender performed, or and there's this specialist word, performity. I'm, I'm grateful for Valentina for uh, translating this accurately into French. Um, performed or performative. In listening to what she says, I invite each of you to think about your own gender and to think about where you think it comes from and how it happens.
was translated once into English not very well. We have now translated it into good English and republished it with Mariana, Mariana's approval. She has some interesting things to say. Um, one of the interesting things is that she draws on Judith Butler and the queer theory ideas. But at a very simple level, Mariana de Campo says in this document that tango is a macho dance few would dispute. Without going any further, it is evidenced in how the roles are designated. Man leads, woman follows. But not always. Oh, that's the man leads, woman follows. Um, I've included a number of images taken from show tango, because often in the public mind, show tango is tango not having danced it, not knowing the social dance. She's, this is still Mariana de Campo. What we question is not the existence of roles, which is the primary basis of the structure of tango, but the way they are set and defined with gender, as if one was strictly related to another. And we have yet another instance of this not being done. Note the convention. Um, this is uh, another um, interesting take. I said we were going to look at different contexts. That's the context of Buenos Aires. The context of modern Russia is very, very different in terms of the practices of queer tango. We were lucky that we had a superb piece supplied to us by Natalia Makulova. And in it, she writes, due to the mainstream, and this is the mainstream in Russia, Due to the mainstream notion on gendered order in Russia, tango remains here a symbol of love and passion between a man and a woman. A way of realizing one's femininity or masculinity. In other words, another way of sustaining the traditional heteronormative discourse. Um, I'm stopping the footnotes now, but you're still to look at the clothing, see the clothing. Yeah. Uh, Natalia Mikulova did an excellent job of saving some superb quotes from promotional material for tango in Russia. Here's one. After becoming strong, independent, even self-sufficient and successful, a woman keeps expecting real masculine behavior, care and courtship from a man. She keeps waiting for a real man. This is selling tango. That's okay. The Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here we have um, the ability to dance Argentinian tango will help keep a woman to feel like a real woman, graceful, <laughs> light, seductive, and intriguing. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, he's not much better. The ability to dance Argentina Argentinian tango will help every man to feel a real man. I pondered over that sentence for a while. <laughs> um, confident, determined, and persistent, because obviously every man is insecure. This is the way to sell tango. Natalia adds, it's interesting to note that male dancers associate the leading role with masculinity, determination, responsibility, a typical set of macho values. While describing the follower's role, they use terms such as gentleness, grace, <coughs> sensitivity, trust. Which is why it becomes clearer why they reject, as men, the following role. By doing this, they symbolic, by doing this, by if they adopted the following role, they would symbolically lose their masculinity and we know what that is. Lose their masculinity, become more feminine and gentle, and that cannot be consistent with the ideal of the real man. She goes on, and this observation of hers, I think, is terrifically valuable. She says, it's important to understand the subversive nature of queer tango, as it breaks with the patriarchal system, attacking its main principle of control and domination. And here we can see two people, one of whom I know is at this uh, event, doing exactly that. The 
unconventional roles, a woman leading a man. This is the context. Today, this is uh, Natalia again, today, when the reinforcement of totalitarian rule and power, narrow-minded traditionalism and xenophobia are rife, you have to remember that in Russia today, those things, particularly the anti-gay, anti-LGBT stuff, are absolutely in mainstream politics. They are part of everyday life there. It alters what the meaning is that queer tango has. It's important, she says, to continue to dance and share this magnificent experience with creative and flexible people. And this is the important part. No matter what gender or sexual orientation they are, so that's not bad in terms of being a working definition of what queer tango might be. And notice it's without regard to gender or sexual orientation. A different take on masculinity, this time from Rome. Inevitably, our evidence is coming from around the world. The queer tango community is a community that is absolutely connected through social media. It has very much determined the shape the thing has. So from Rome, we have Milo Morandi and Pilia Ceruli leading Tambo Tango Femme, a woman-only group who perform, and they go to mainstream milongas and queer them. They go there and they dance. Some of their publicity, you know, their clothes, and just a little of their dancing. They, they are interested in, in contact dancing as well as tango. And I think from this short book, go back. Venue, 
which she, she did. And um, she was very charismatic. And uh, that's, that is not a criticism. She's very charismatic. And she gave a very, very interesting class. Um, and in it, she advocated active following. She explained, rather than following the heteronormative conventions of tango, passively responding to everything the leader leads, the follower makes interventions in the flow of the dance and sometimes takes the lead themselves. Now, I don't have any problem with that. The problem that I have, sorry, that is the piece, there we go. The problem that I have, we've lost a bit of text, come back. Yes, this is what I said. I disagree, or I did then, I disagree with the notion that queer tango is primarily a repost to heteronormative tango. Now I'll tell you what I think now. I think it probably was created as a repost to heteronormative tango, but the thing that it is created as a repost to is not exactly as described. Anyway, I wrote that then. Many practices which characterize queer tango today existed in and originated from the mainstream. I take issue at a fundamental level. I learned to dance in the mainstream. From my personal experiences of the mainstream and my conversations with others who dance in it, who dance it with me, dance it with others and dance it well, this one-way oppressive heteronormative model implied in Walter's proposition and commonly cited in accounts of queer tango though not unknown, is not a characteristic of high quality conventional tango. I suggest it is either a caricature taken from show tango, the consequence of making the dance seem as if it resembles the model of show tango more closely, or it is within the subtler social dance with which I am familiar, a consequence of bad leading. That argument only works if the only evidence that you refer to is the evidence I was familiar with, which was the mainstream tango scene in London. Now, we've got a problem, possibly, that there seems to be a characterization of the mainstream as having the machismo, and then another characterization of it not having the machismo. I suggest mainstream social tango is not uniformly a home for oppressive machismo. That's mainstream tango, a nice uniform tango. I'm using an idea here from a writer called Jeffrey Tobey, who wrote this article called Tango and the Scandal of Homosocial Desire. I recommend it to you, it's a good read. The thing I'm taking from it is him reporting from Buenos Aires that depending on, and I'm glad Helen is looking at me very keenly here, that in Buenos Aires, um, depending on which teacher you go to, you might get taught tango where the man leads and the woman follows, and only follows. Or you might get taught a more equal version of mainstream tango, depending on which teachers you go to. And the other observation, oh, yes, sorry, uh, it applies to tango around the world, arguably, I say that it does. So, there are different styles that can be unequal or can be equal. There's also different levels of experience. So maybe at the beginning, often it's taught in an unequal way, but as people become more confident, that unevenness is inclined to balance out so that the more advanced dancers often have the possibility of a much more equal relationship. So, Mainstream tango is not this simple thing. It has pockets of the unequal relationship in it, and it also has plenty of room for a much more equal relationship. And that's before we get to changing the roles, active leader followership, and, and things of that kind, all of which are of terrific value and which we should discuss. So, if the mainstream is mixed, we have to acknowledge and I mean, even in the last few days, the last 48 hours, it must be obvious, queer tango is mixed too. It's not a monolithic one thing. 
inevitably it includes, it uh, has within it the axis, if you like, of straight. I've put queer in there in its other form, LGBT. And each of us could, if we chose, try and locate ourselves somewhere along there, maybe at different points in different parts of our lives. Um, and then we have this other axis of woman, man, and again, we could, if we chose, um, sort of map ourselves there somewhere, if we chose. And of course, there's the leader-follower axis as well. So between them, they make this sort of three-dimensional space in which, if we chose, we could locate ourselves. The problem with that box is that the box can become a cage. It can become confining. In trying to sort out where in that space each of us might be, and at any time in our lives where each of us might be, it can cause an awful lot of grief. The wonderful thing about Queer Tango is that it provides a perfect opportunity for everybody to explore femininity, their femininity if they choose, to explore their masculinity, and it doesn't have to be correspondent with where you might expect to find it in that three-dimensional space. Because the beauty of Queer Tango is that it blows the box open. That's what it does. It dispenses with all of that. And I'd just like to give you a wonderful example. I'm sorry, I chopped your head off. Oh, that's a lovely one. Thank you. Oh, that's a lovely one. Something going on there, a 
about um, clothes, meaning and masculinity. This is another interesting one from Susanna Romero, where the leader is actually wearing the, uh, it's sort of the, the sexual power of casual, if you like, and leading a man who is wearing the power of the suit. So that's a very interesting bit of inversion going on there, a competition between different kinds of masculinity. Here's another example, this time from America. Um, here we see two men, well-known men uh, in the queer tango community. And they are wearing men's shirts, but they are floral shirts, and they blend very nicely with the floral background that is there. But, but, he's wearing a hat. He's wearing a hat. So in wearing a hat, he's reaching out to tango history. He's saying, I am a leader in, in, in queer tango. I am leading this man, but I am making a gesture towards the history of tango by wearing this hat. I have the hat because I am the leader. The follower would not have the hat. But I haven't come to the country which had Roland Bart in it and published mythologies and so on and so on without recognizing that that hat doesn't have fixed meaning. Its meaning is determined by the context that it is found in. And if we were to move the hat to con artist from America, and she's wearing the hat, and the tie, and the suit, and the shirt. And that hat then has another meaning, because she is indicating that she has assumed all the power that's historically associated with the man in the masculine role. And she has applied it to herself. And it is not a pretense. She's doing this very self-consciously. And here we have a very unequal relationship in terms of clothing. Um, another piece of work by con artist, where um, we still have the suit of power, but the follower has, for reasons best known to himself, decided to dance completely naked. Yes, John, I'm looking at you. It could happen. It could. It could. It could. Um, much to the uh, amusement and interest of the people there, she's called this dallying in the alleyway. Um, you can see that clothing opens up a world of possibilities. Um, adopting and subverting parts of masculinity. Uh, we have this work of art from Laurie Ann Greenberg, and on the right hand side we have a, a feminine tanguera with feminine clothes, and on the left hand side we have a, possibly a tanguera. Um, wearing masculine clothes, and between them they have clothed the central figure who is wearing some masculine clothes and some feminine clothes. This is a, a, a queer tango uh, prototype, if you like. Another tale, this is an interesting one. Alex Gastel. She writes, but wait a minute, as a pansexual, can't I just have flirting and eroticism with the opposite sex at normal monogamous? Yes and no. I can, but getting pressed into a gender category, and she says, I'm usually perceived as a woman with all the attendant restrictions and beauty ideals is to me, her, uh, him, them, a turn-off. What if I like men in high heels? What if I like women with penises? What if I like androgynous persons? This is her I am gender queer. At some point along the way, I started to identify as neither woman nor man. I experimented with androgynous clothing, with a new name and a new haircut, and I loved it. Now, what has that to do with queer tango? Dancing the lead was my first big break with gender norms on a more bodily level. For me, it's not only about dancing two roles. It's also about mixing elements of both worlds. I do, hopefully, elegant embellishments while leading. I make strong and energetic movements while following. Again, this form of dancing feels more complete. By way of contrast, I'm just going to introduce this a modern manifesto from my co-editor, Alaya Oramo and Belen Castellanos. Um, I'll just read you the first few words, which sets this perfectly into context. They write, This is a 
sarcastic, romantic, and anarcho-communist manifesto about a tango practice from a queer, feminist, anti-capitalist, and Kanjenge perspective. So that's cards on the table. Um, the thing that uh, Alaya and her co-author dislike is not masculinity as such. The thing that attracts their real anger is tango salon. And they write, tango salon trivializes tango by neglecting its essence. It turns tango into a superficial ritual of gender, where acceptable and unproblematic femininities and masculinities are formed. It establishes an anthropological individualism that is based on banal leisure and on elitist capitalist professionalization. I just leave that with you as a further critique of how genders can be played out even in queer tango where it involves tango salon. Oh, and notice the time. So, not wearing masculinity. This is an image of Solomon pulling on his ideals. Um, I couldn't possibly leave out Lucas on account of um, uh, uh, the splendid display that we saw um, yesterday. It, it, this is a way of um, not, it, it is so different from pretending to, forgive me, to be a woman, and I, I am not a, uh, an authority on these things, but it is the introduction of an element that subverts conventional ideas of masculinity and does so in constructive and interesting ways. And how could I possibly ignore Funky and Danny, who have become the poster boys for this entire event, where they self-evidently are men, and they self-evidently are not dressed as men. And we've been looking at clothing quite a lot. I think it's really important to remember that clothing is not images of clothing. It's something that we have on warm, living bodies, and it is something that moves. Now, I'm not going to do a demonstration, but I thought we could have a look at um, Tango Confusion. Tango Confusion did a performance in Argentina in 2015, this year. And these bodies move, so let's just, oh, come back, come back. It's doing something with it. Go back, go back. There we are. Big. <laughs> Tango was 
constructed in opposition to can be addressed and perhaps resolved by taking bits of masculinity, subverting them, changing them, undermining them, but referring to them, including them. On the evidence, this is the conclusion, you're lucky, we're nearly there. On the evidence of the Queer Tango book, to what extent is Queer Tango shaped by attitudes towards masculinity, and to whom does it matter? Now, we've seen how complex these things are, so the question perhaps should have been, on the evidence of the Queer Tango book, to what extent are Queer Tangos, the very many versions of them that there are, shaped by attitudes towards masculinities, the different versions of masculinity? And to whom does it matter? So the first way in which masculinity has shaped queer tango is rejection. Queer tango arose in part as a rejection of some versions of masculinity found in mainstream tango, which limited our choice of roles, our styles of dancing, how we dress and present ourselves. The second way is through subversion. We in Queer Tango subvert aspects of masculinity by, guess, our choice of roles, our styles of dancing, how we dress and present ourselves. And the third way in which Queer Tango is shaped by masculinity is when we celebrate. We in Queer Tango appropriate and celebrate masculinity by our choice of roles, our styles of dancing, how we dress and present ourselves. And I'm going to add to that, and who we dance with and where. I said that we'd come back to Judith Butler, we're coming back to her now. There are these things. If she was going to ask this question, is masculinity in queer tango performed or performative? I think on the basis of the evidence that we've seen here, the answers could be both, or could be either. So, to the extent that queer tango is performed, in other words, the queer tango version of show tango, the masculinity is performed. It is a deliberate act. I would argue that in social tango, it's more likely that it is performative. That is, it is rather than being an act, it is being realized by the doing of the thing. It, we have choices, um, and maybe sometimes we can slide between performance and perform. Uh, we were dancing in the street uh, yesterday, and I noticed that when people were watching, I slipped in an intercambio like it was perfectly natural. But I was performing, undoubtedly I was. But we know that the, I think the best social tango, we push the ego to one side, it's a different thing. So I should say that it's performative there. And finally, to who does this matter? We can have our online bickering on Facebook about, oh, I like this, I like that, I like whatever. What does it matter? Who does it matter to? I say that it matters to everyone. I don't mean everyone, and I'm going to explain. We have queer tango, we have mainstream tango. Attitudes towards masculinity in queer tango are altering mainstream tango. This event that we are a part of has the express mission to bring queer tango into the mainstream. Equally, attitudes towards masculinities in the mainstream inform queer tango. And there's something happening, and it's been happening more rapidly in the last two or three years, queer tango and mainstream tango are drawing together. Now, I will go one stage further. I'm looking towards the future. This is my view, not the view of my co-editors. I can imagine a time when there is no queer tango, when there is just tango. And I have a... <laughs> <laughs> Lucas dies a little. It's going to be an interesting question session at the end here. Okay, so this, let me draw a comparison. Um, the, in recent history, we've had the whole business of gay marriage. I'm just using the language of the newspapers. I'm not being politically correct. The whole 
debate about gay marriage and main street marriage and the fighting there was. I have to say for myself, I didn't want it until I noticed that people I didn't respect didn't want me to have it, and then I wanted it. Um, that's perfectly reasonable. I think that's logical. So there's been these debates. It's all happening. Um, and what is happening is that attitudes towards marriage have informed the mainstream marriage institution. And attitudes in the mainstream marriage institution have shaped like crazy um, its uh, LGBT equivalent. And sure enough, the same thing is happening. The two are drawing together. If somebody asks me, are you married? Today, they probably don't assume that I might be married to a woman. I could be married to a man. That is becoming normal, boring almost. Um, well, I think that's really good. So you can have just marriage rather than the whole shebang. All of this is played out in context. It is played out in a wider world. And these debates are happening and the wider world is out there. How does queer tango relate to that? In the last chapter of the book, we have a chapter called Changing the World. And it is exactly about that relationship. There's stuff in there by me, because I care about this stuff rather badly. Um, there's my football tango project there, where we take queer tango to football teams, and we get the players to dance with one another, and then reflect on homophobia in football. It is going to make a difference. Um, there they are. Uh, that's the, uh, I'm doing it with a sports coach. He's there. Um, that's an interesting one. But I'm not going to do that one. I thought I'd do, just as a final one, Edgardo Fernando Sesma, who is in the book. He's a very, very interesting queer tanguero. He is uncommonly active in Buenos Aires, doing all sorts of different things, flash mobs with the names of countries where people get murdered if they're um, lesbian or gay or transsexual, all sorts of things. Um, this is a picture of Los Dareles, uh, which is an interesting um, uh, community center. I'm not actually going to talk about any of that. What I'm going to talk about is um, a recent news story in uh, Argentina about femicide, about women being murdered in violent ways. And there is a whole plague of this going on in Buenos Aires at the moment. Edgardo Fernandez Sesma runs a very uh, successful tango class for adultos mayores, for um, in English they are old age pensioners or senior citizens. Seniors. And they decided that they were going to join um, a large demonstration against this. The women decided, and the men decided. And they did. And there we have Congresso at the large demonstration that there was. So that's an interesting example of queer tango engaging with the wider world and doing something that is absolutely pertinent to, to uh, what it is. The, I, I should say at this point that those uh, classes for adultos mayores are not queer tango classes, but they are taught by a queer tanguero who is acknowledged as such. So, there we are. We are at an event which has expressly said that it is heterosexual friendly. I was thrilled when I read those words um, for a variety of reasons, but one was I thought it was terrifically funny. I, I really, really do, because you can have any number of well-meaning, liberal, um, heterosexual organizations saying, yes, yes, we are gay-friendly, come to us, which is nice. Um, but the idea that you could turn it on its head and say, yes, yes, come to us, I thought that was hilarious. And I also think it's very serious, too. So, there we have an example of queer tango being taken out into the world. It happened yesterday. And it's absolutely consistent with the aspirations of this particular event. And I believe that it is consistent with um, wider movements that are happening within Queer Tango at the moment. I called this the Queer Tango Book and Masculinities, Critiques and Celebrations in Context. We could have had the Queer Tango Book and Femininities instead of being against a background
Thank you very much. Now, this is the exciting bit where those questions that you've been thinking as I've been rabbiting on, you are now have an opportunity to ask them, and I'd be grateful if you would. And I would also be particularly interested if anybody has their own version of what they believe is happening with queer tango and masculinities at the moment, particularly if it is at odds, different to the one that I just offered. countries, 
So we had material that had originated in German, material that had originated in other languages, and it seemed to us that English, international English, was the nearest to a common language that we could use. Yes. No, I think yours is a perfectly reasonable position. We just didn't do it. Yes. 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 Well, when the volunteer comes along. Yes.
there's that context as well, the normalization context, and they should, is it that desirable to mm. be normalized, mm. to be part of the mainstream? Mm. Is what, what could be the issues about that? When in Buenos Aires, for example, hetero-friendly is a very, as I wrote about, it's, a, it's actually a commercial strategy. It makes place mm -hmm. more palatable, therefore open to a wider market. Mm. Perfectly fine. I'm not saying yeah, it shouldn't. I, fine. Everybody fine. I, I'm fine with people making money. I'm not uh, saying anything against it, but I'm saying that's a context too of normalization and mainstreaming. And in a way, when we talk about masculinity and femininity, in your presentation, it was only about individuals. That's actually a very masculine way of thinking mm -hmm. because masculinity and femininity. Could be mapped into social spaces as well and practices. Indeed. And, and when we think about that. activities mainly as individuals, that's actually a very masculine way of thinking about how people relate to each other. And, and I'm sure my consciousness is raised here. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, would, I would encourage everybody to download the book, obviously, where they can read Miguel's interesting observations about this at more length. I'm not going to reply. I'll talk to you later. John. Yeah, but I'd just like to add to what Miguel said. Yeah, please do. This is evidencing of that. Uh, I'm, I'm a sociologist and I, I do a lot of work in the extreme right, in the analysis of fascists, and uh, particularly involved with women in the far right. And uh, one thing I think is certainly happening is that nationalism, extreme nationalism, is beginning to enlist LGBT communities within their notion of the nation, the concept of the nation, as a way of excluding a new other, the new other, of course, being Islam. Muslims. So the inclusion of, of the LGBT community into the mainstream has some, some quite problematic implications in the hands of, of some people where it can be enlisted as part of a, a new notion of the nation mm -hmm. that embraces the LGBT people actually at the very same time and for the actual purpose of excluding another which is yeah. uh, Islam and Muslims. Um, well, However, I just like my, my main point. Oh, sorry, it's oh, that was just you revving up, was no, 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 yeah, it? Yeah, John, yeah, could you cut to the chase? So I'm moving completely this trajectory right back to sort of okay. the grab and sort of thing. Me and Ray, we dance more or less in the same kinds of areas, which is London and Thames Valley. Thames Valley is in quite a different demographic to London, isn't it? Older, yeah. let's say more conservative yes. in some respects. Yeah. However, what's really striking, cannot be disputed, is that same sex dancing yeah. is a very visible feature of yeah. every no longer yeah. that we attend and that's certainly striking in the last five years. Yes. So my question is this, there's a really significant increase in the number of women who are learning to lead. Yes. In the main, in my experience, most of these women are heterosexual, mm -hmm. often married to partners that they go to them along yeah. with yeah. and they therefore go with two pairs of shoes and they alternate the yeah. shoes all night. And springing up in London are, are classes for women leaders. Yes. A number of different renowned clubs now offer yeah. classes for women in yeah. London. My question is, is that in any sense queer? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's a good question. Fabulous. Well, how, how do you situate that in relation to the queer? Okay, uh, I, would, I would offer one answer, and I'm going to suggest that when we have done this, we stop and go. Um, uh, the answer that I would give is that you can do any of the things that queer tango embraces, men leading men, women leading women, women leading men, all of those combinations, you can do the whole catalog and it need not be queer tango. Because if it is happening and the people doing it don't have some sense of the social and political dimensions of the things that they're doing, then I would argue, I think, that that's not queer tango. But it might be. And it might be relevant to queer tango. I'm going to let that hang in the air. And then there is one question. Go on. Go on. It's not a question. It's your, I dance on the street scene as a leader. Sorry? I dance on the street scene as a leader. Yes. I learned on the street scene because it was good teaching and there was no problem with it. And I don't find, I don't think that's queer tango. Mm -hmm. I think queer tango is the energy that we have on another person. Okay. And it, it doesn't often happen, but occasionally I'm pushed into it 
Yes. So I'm very conscious of energy. I can hear tango. It's much more about getting used to different people. Mm -hmm. So for me, to a lot of the guys about wearing high heels, I personally can't wear high heels. And you know, I'm the failure, my failure as a woman not wearing high heels. There's all these guys doing it brilliantly. Yes. And it's also feeling my energy with the energy of different people. Yes. And taking the time to do that. I, I, would, I, would, sorry, I would say in connection with, oh, it's gone. But I was going to say, I think mean, that is a very important fact of mm. your time. Dancing ballroom, it's the same. Dancing with men that don't just say, will you leave me, but actually can follow. Mm. And having that energy together. I don't care if you don't influence the straight world. Mm. Okay. You know, the straight world really won't survive. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Oh, go on. Go on, go on, go on. Now we really should because there's dancing to happen. Dancing is much more interesting than talking about it. Go on.
Very good. Uh, you'll, you'll, 